So we're back to the second episode of our interview with Kim from Gothenburg, where we discuss open data and open source from the perspective of a, of a public actor. Enjoy. Uh, a question about licenses on API. It used to be a discussion a couple of years ago in Gothenburg. Do you, did you reach any conclusion on that one? Licensing on API. I don't remember any specific oh. things within those, but all oh, I can say now is that, yeah, no, but because there's been issues within how we can be able to release data uh, because of many, many, many things. But in the last years, since I started working with this issue, we've adapted um, Decatope, just to follow one standard. We've adapted to following um, Creative Commons licensing. We've ad adapted to following other EU standarding because it makes us so much easier. If I'm having my own standards, I'll have my own troubles and no one will help me fix them. But if I comply to stuff that are being used, I get so many benefits. And now people are learning that. I think before we looked into what is out there, we thought, holy shit, we'll have to fix this ourselves, you know, invent the wheel situation. We're not there anymore as people and as a city because of steps that we have taken and seen, oh, we fucking made it. <laughs> and, and people need to do that. How much do you, sh I mean, the, the, you provide data through APIs and then I guess there's a lot of IT infrastructure behind. How, how much of that is uh, open and, and sort of, do, do, do you have open source projects around these API bridges or uh, or is that completely no. separate? No, I don't think that, um, I think it's easier to release open data because it's just information that is structured in some way. Could be a PDF, but more, hopefully it's an API. Or I'll make it into an API, but but when it comes to code and products that we do, there isn't any. Um, let's say there isn't a lot of um, people that have had in the back of their mind. Maybe this could be used in in more than one sentence or or, or practice or or company. So we haven't released those things because we didn't see that it was a quality product, A, <laughs> you know, <laughs> ego, afraid, so on. B, that anybody else should use it because they're their own entity. They're, they're their own problems. I don't have to think and work for them and so on and so on. What is changing now is that in the, in the census where I work, and uh, when an entity approaches me and says, hey, Kim, we would like to get these kinds of services digitized. Could you help us find a company to, to work with? So we do this a huge cycle of uh, explaining what we do and put it out there uh, as, as we have to do with LU to log in on Ophantly or Pandling. It's a, it's a jungle of, of things that we need to do just to find the right company to work with. And what I do when we get to that scenario is that I say that for, for me to help you and, and comply with this project that you're doing, my demand is that we own the data and we own the code because I want to publish that code up on GitHub so that I know that the other entity, which I know is working in a similar problem, can already start from step 10 instead of starting from step zero, which is having nothing. And that is a, that is a big mindset and big change for the city because like I said, we're mostly working like this and we're working with our favorite uh, babies and we know best and so on. And I have the best coding skills to do that or I know the best companies and so on. Which, Probably people do, but sharing is caring, and and you should do that with code, because in any sense, if you just look at HTML, if code was not shared, we would be fucked right now. Yeah. So just those simple things has to be in your mentality of working. 
So a couple of years back, I said, okay, from now on, I want everything that we do for the public to be released as open data so that I don't have to pay for the invention again. I, I'll gladly play a company to help me get that product to be better and to, to be sustainable and holistic and so on. But I don't want to start from zero every time in this sector. So, so when um, just before the interview, you told me that you have a GitHub, uh, yeah. and we will place the link under this video definitely. But what what type of contents can we find there today? Uh, not a lot, because like I said, it, it's new to us, and the method of working and 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 get extracting everything and and putting up quality code is not something that we do in the handshake. But but the things that we have up there now is one application that we created that's called the uh, Anmel Hinder. It's an application, it's an app for Android and for iPhone that is built in the sole purpose of helping people that have maybe disabilities or obstacles in their everyday life that they want to report. It's something that we are abide by law to do. There, there's a category of things that needs to be worked and looked upon. So in that application, it's a, like I said, it's a five-step process. I only use five-step processes because that's what you remember. If you have more than five, then you won't remember them because the other hand is doing something else every time. So if it's five, you'll remember them. So the app is five steps. And the idea is to help us as a city to provide the correct information when we fucked up. And that is accessibility fuck-ups that we do. Maybe it's a cornerstone that is not face down, so you can't get up with your roller or your stroller or your or baby carrier or anything. But those things get reported very seldom when it's a, a knee service. So together with the, the different interest group like the blind and the deaf and the disabled, we did a, a user invention and a, and a um, service design travel to see what are the problems, how should we address them, and how should we solve them. So we came up with this five-step process and this app. So that was the first code that we released uh, because I know that the the 289 communes within city uh, or in Sweden have the exact same issues that they need to attend to. And I didn't want them to start from zero, I said, okay, here's an application that works, that does this, that we need to do. All you have to do, download the code, hire a programmer, change the logo, change the email address, and voila, up and running. So uh, I want how, did you, uh, how did you reasons around licensing for, for the app content? Is, is that also permissively licensed? or, yep, or, it's or free, have... just download, enjoy. So is it, is it BSD or, or something like that, or? Do you, do you know that on the top of your head? No, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not in all of those jungles. But but like I said, with with the open data, I want it to be the same, the similar ideas. So Creative Commons licensing should be applied on those. If it's not, just just give me a holler and, and I'll correct that. No, I, I, I think that's an interesting aspect of of licensing <laughs> in general. That that different licenses make sense in different contexts. Mm. Uh, so, so to me, for instance, um, if you have a tool that you create for for the common good, and and the tool itself is what you what you share, then a stronger copyleft means that everyone has to contribute to the tool. While, for instance, something like the the data that you want to be mashed up into anything, basically, there it makes sense to have fewer restrictions when it comes to to mm. have the feedback. Whereas CC zero or BSD style license makes more sense. Uh, mm. So, so that's why I'm asking. Uh, I'm very welcoming in the the discussion of what kind of licensing I should use for code because I'm not good at this. I know you are, and you're more interested in and in what kind of coding and licensing should be mixed and matched. So I'm very helpful if if you want to pro provide me yeah, those kind of discussions and information. Follow up meeting or a virtual coffee. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely. I mean, Absolutely. we were talking. We were talking before the meeting about uh, this uh, public money, public code thing, mm -hmm. which is an initiative that the Free Software Foundation in Europe has been running. Um, 
So, I, I mean, uh, there are some things that are on GitHub now. Um, software in general that the city has developed or paid someone to develop. It, is it the common case that the city owns the copyright for that code? And in that case, could I could I request the code as a uh, as as a public? Uh, I mean, if the city owns the code, then it would mm -hmm. be an element handling right, unless yes. it's a secret for some reason. No, I think you hit the uh, the nail with the hammer because the, anything that we have bought you guys to do, we pay you to program something, and, and in that text if you read it it says that the city owns that information because you're working for us in that context so it's not your code you're not uh, obliged to sell it and use it freely because it is ours if we want to put it up there for for free use we can but the code is ours i am not saying that everybody is even looking into the fine prints within those especially not companies because they use open source coding to provide a application for us and they sell it to us. I mean, they, we all know that this is happening all the time. And may, maybe it's fine, I think not, but I want to foster a community that when you paid something with your taxpayer money, you should get it back because that's provided by the law. Let's try to keep it that simple. And that's what I take to all these projects that I'm working with. And that's what I try to teach my uh, fellow co-workers within the city. This is the approach that we should have. Tell the company you're happy to use whatever to build that. State that in your code, but give the code back to us so that we can put it out there. And then you will be free to use it as well to whatever extent of project you want to. And for, for the company that helped us make uh, Anmel Hinder, for instance, They've used the code in different projects and sold ideas, but they still use the code and they, they share it freely because they understand that the money may be not in the code, it's in the idea and the service that we should provide, which yeah. it is. It, it, it reminds me a lot about uh, Pixam in Gata, which I think also is applicable mm -hmm. in, in Gothenburg. I, yeah. I know that Henry same idea, in that. Just, different, uh, just different areas. Yeah. And like I said, we need to uh, apply to some um, standards and qualities and law. That that's why we created this. Otherwise, Pixam and Gata is splendid in that sense. Yeah, it's it's just more general. So it's broken street lights exactly. around my yeah. my running track. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> use it and uh, and the citizens Sorry. within our city they, they use any method to give me that information, whether it's Pixam and Gata or Alman Handling or Alman Hinder or just the email or a text or whatever. So um, we, we get that. Yes, sorry for interrupting somebody. I think it was Henrik who had something. Or? Uh, it, was, it was a comment. I, I think if it's something got, I was partly involved in that. Uh, it was started as some kind of reaction or trying to get more people on board, making things happen. Hmm. I think it's a very good idea. I know it was really good when it started. Today, it needs to be reamped and reabamped so, so it will make a better service provider because it's not, it's not giving everything that you want as a, as a person actually using it. So it, it should be uh, taken care of again. But then well, I, just, I know that just noticed on the web page of uh, Fixamin Gata that the code is under the AGPL license, so it's 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 very open, and so it would be possible for anyone to to fix it. And it is, yes, it is, yeah. But it, it's interesting the Fixamin Gata or Fix My Street as the I think mm -hmm. app. Was yeah, it's the Open Three One One. Uh, it is it hard to develop? code and or data between various cities or, or municipalities in, in Sweden? Yes, it is. Because of, uh, of the same thing that I was talking about, that we have, um, we have our own entities, we have our own money, we have our own whatever, 
Did you lose me? No, no, no. Bleep. no. No, but we have our own Hoovered men. Yep. Uh, within every entity, there, there is politicians that, that take care of you and say what you should do, and they have their own money. So it's not easy for me to call Skövde and say, hey, Skövde, let's create Fix Amengata together. I have some money. You have some money. Let's get a party going. It's not easy. It's very hard to be precise. But we're trying to fix that with different kinds of uh, openness. And I think this is exactly where open code and open data will help you. Because if we provide the same thing, me and Skövde, then I can talk to you guys and say, hey, guys, I have a problem. We need to fix these kinds of services for our citizens within any city. I just need the service to be fixed. Here's my ideas. Here's my data. And Shrevda has the same. You guys have the opportunity of the world to make whatever you want with this product. You can sell it, share it, give it away, whatever. But I just need the service to be fixed. So my money comes from citizens paying taxes, and I need to fix those services. Whomever makes the, the product, I really don't care. It's great that somebody who's uh, at my courtyard does it, but it really doesn't have to be because I need to fix the service. That's my job, not building stuff, not creating code. So we have to find those kinds of interactions, and that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. And that, that's why it's important for me to reach out to you guys and talk to in these kinds of forums, because then you'll know how you shall approach me. Because there, like I said, there are services, a lot of services that every city has to attend to. They just don't have the minds or the programming skills or, or the fundamental basics of understanding how to fix a problem. So yeah, we I, need to come together in those terms. And Sorry. I think this is improving in the public sector. So, so I mean, as you say, there, there are there has been problems and there are problems. So, so we have this uh, law for public procurement uh, mm -hmm. or handling and, and so yep. on. But, but I, for instance, we have the school platform. So, so the school platform, which I think is built partially by Alling Source, that has mm -hmm. started these collaborations. So it's a it's an interesting field where we're trying to sort of fit in open source in, in a set of rules that aren't really made with open source in mind. Yeah. yeah. But, but it is, um, it's getting there. In, in everything that the EU presents to us as digitizing people, they say you have to work with um, sustainability. You have to work with digitization. You have to work with openness, transparency, replication, and open code. It's not a good to have or want, it's a must. And that is good. It's finally getting there. It yeah. took us ages to get there, but it's finally there. I share the link on the chat for the Open 311, which is Fix Amingata service. This is a standard way of working and fixing uh, an application like uh, Fix Amingata. The EU has said, this is the standard data model you should use when you need these kinds of applications. And that's what we're following. Yeah, that's we'll... why it's important to look at, at what EU says and what Fireware and TM Forum and those big players are doing. I'm working with them, helping them to, to make these data models better so that we all can get the benefit of the services. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's really moving along. And I mean, I think it was two years ago since you spoke on, on a physical mm -hmm. event, and then you, you really talked about these goals about being the most digital, the most progressive city. So it's it's great hearing that you always make make progress. Um, we do a lot. Yeah, we're, we're unfortunately running out of time. Mm -hmm. um, but the links you shared, of course, we will put them in the in the show notes. Um, and it's been a pleasure having you. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Absolutely. Thanks.